Caballeros que fuman. We're smoking the My Father Fonseca MX edition. Mm. So you guys know about the Fonseca line that my father came out with a few years ago. And now they came out with the Mexican edition, which is the Mexican San Andres wrapper that it has. And it's a lovely cigar. I mean, it scored really high in the ratings uh, back in May, June. Uh, we're smoking it in the Cedros size, which is six and a half by 52. It's obviously produced in Nicaragua, where everything from my father is produced. Mm. Wrapper is Mexican. Filler and binder from Nicaragua. This one retails at twelve fifty. It's available in four sizes. Robusto, Cedros, which is this one. Toro Gordo and Toro Grande, which is kind of unique, right? Like they're, they're, that was That's my what they call you. That's what they call you. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Toro Gordo. Ah, and Toro Grande. Yeah. Here we go. So, well, in case you're wondering, the Toro Gordo is a six by 60 and the Toro Grande is a six and a half. <laughs> that was too easy. By to by easy. I, I Low I hanging yeah. fruit, my yeah. friend. I thought we were going to cruise past well, it because it was no, too no, easy. No. Never, 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 no. never. Uh, so what do you guys, uh, I was going to tell you guys some I was going to read some of the notes from when we rated it, but I decided I'm going to just, I'd like to hear your thoughts since we have been smoking it for a little bit. Uh, where are you at with this? I guess something typical of, of Mexican San Andres wrappers is just the sweetness that comes out of it. So it's just, it's this dark uh, wrapper here. And as soon as you light it up and you put it in your mouth, it's like this abundance of sweetness yeah it's that like comes a ripe, right ripe fruit yeah. kind of sweetness yeah like i i was going to use the word bold that, okay. that's that that's, that's what jumps fair. out of me i mean it, it it gets your attention you know you definitely you, you light it and you're like i mean first of all obviously you, you nailed it the wrapper very it's a dark wrapper and and you're just like ooh, okay you know is this I, mean, I don't know if this is a morning cigar i mean it could be because it's it's not it's not, it's not a chest buster per se, but it's definitely, it's bold to start. It gets your attention. Yeah, it's not a morning cigar for most people, I would no. say. Yeah. Uh, now, one comment about the wrapper that I like is, uh, although it is Maduro and it's obviously dark, it is not, I'm always, I always look for that in a Maduro. It always kind of bothers me. It's maybe like a pet peeve mm. when the when the Maduro is so dark that, it's almost like impossibly dark. Like you can't get tobacco to get that dark right. on its own. And so this is this is perfectly Maduro, right? This is it's dark, dark, dark brown, but it's still brown, you know? And it, it's a very natural Maduro. So I, I'm always I'm always cognizant of that. Whenever I get a Maduro, I always I look at it, oof, that looks, you know. That almost looks like, like it's been doctored in some way. Almost, this does almost not. like a, a, a middle-aged man going in through a phase and all of a sudden, yeah, guess what? Hey, hey Bob's got dark hair today. I hope, yes. I hope it doesn't rain. It's going to ruin his shirt. You know, yeah. you know So this does not. This is a very, like I said, natural <gasps> Maduro wrapper, right? So George Hamilton. George Hamilton spray tan? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, so no, I think I think this is a, it, it's a beautiful wrapper. Uh, I agree that that sweetness is there. What uh, what other notes uh, do you guys get? It's very nutty. So you get uh, like a nice like black pepper uh, in the back of the throat, which is very subtle, uh, not overpowering. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's not it's pepper. Not, yeah. It's not a peppery cigar. So it's a, a lot of darker like Maduros. I guess they give the impression they might be peppery. This is not. This is creamy. It's nutty. It's smooth, and the peppers are subtle, so it's it's enjoyable. And and the retro hail, it's funny for for the it's sort of like the aftertaste. The, I get that peppery on you, and again, it's it's not it's not like offensive, but it's there. Yeah. But but the retro hail is so smooth, like you know, you, you it, it it it's almost like a contrast. Yeah. Because you get that little af that lingering pepper after you after you 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 you, you exhale. And then, but that retro hill, it just comes out so smooth. And then that's where you get that. To me, that's where you get that nuttiness, it, yeah. especially dur during that during the retro hill. It's very good, very good. Yeah, I, I tell you what, it doesn't point. smoke like it looks. That's the best way I can describe it. No, I, I mean, I guess, I guess not. Because because I, I would look at this, I would look at this, and I would be like, whoa, this is gonna intimidated. Be, this is yeah. gonna be a big boy. But yeah. that's that's part of why we do this and, and and what we want people to see this that sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone because i usually don't smoke uh Maduro's. something that dark yeah. yeah i usually don't because i'm always like mm, you know I, I, I but this thing smokes it's elegant yeah. it's smooth yeah i'll tell you what, so what uh, i would give it a shot especially if, if this isn't what you normally smoke I'll tell you what i what i like 
Uh, so it does have that nuttiness and that pepper and all that. But the sweetness, sometimes with a Maduro, uh, like a lot of times a, a San Andres Maduro like this, you'll get the sweetness up front, right? You take that initial draw of smoke and you get the sweetness up front. And then it's overpowered. That sweetness gets overpowered by the earthiness and the peppers and, and maybe the roasted nuts. And it, it gets overpowered and then you don't get it anymore. Right. And so what I like about this is it's much more well-balanced than that. So you get the sweetness up front and then that sweetness is then joined by pepper and earth and nuts. But it all you can still kind of get the sweetness as you're retrohaling. Mm-hmm. It still continues to come through. It's not. It doesn't get masked. So that's the. It's a subtle difference. It's not like I think a novice smoker probably wouldn't get that. Sure. Right. But if you like take that drawing and let the smoke out, whether you retrohale or let it out, and you you can still get the sweetness as it's going out. You get that, Ivan? Yeah. I yeah. Do. It's not like sweet and then pepper and earth <laughs> that right. washes over everything. It's really well done. It's uh, I, I think I mean that's why it scored so high. It was a uh, it scored ninety two points mm. in in cigar snob. Which again I say it all the time. When you see a ninety two, that means go out and definitely try it well, because it's uh, it's an exceptional cigar. I'll say one thing: it smokes more expensive than the twelve dollars and fifty cents that this MSRP is at because it's it tastes like an expensive like a very like a, almost like another comparable like mexican san andres like expensive 20 dollar cigar right yeah because it has expensive materials in it right and, and you taste it yeah and it's it's that 1250 i mean that's that's bargain nowadays nowadays it is i mean it's, it's sad <laughs> to say that but it is uh in today's world of ever increasing prices now I'll, I'll tell you what before before we get into the X's and O's stuff, and especially before we get into the rum, what what, what jumps out to me as being sort of a, the the novice of, of the group is that after you you done the retro hill, after you exhaled and everything like that, there's still like a little like a little party in your mouth. You yeah, know? yeah. The still, finish, the finish yeah, is the long. The finish is that. That's it's almost like it's weird. It, it's I've never really experienced something that has that long of a finish to it, and it and it's awesome because you know you you can you can put the cigar down and before you take your drink, there's a lot. There's still a lot going on on yeah, your tongue. And I'm your really mouth. excited how it's gonna play with the rums because of that fact. Yeah, because the finish is so long. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a it's, it's a, extraordinary. I've never had a finish like that. And I, I know we've been not gushing about the cigar, so I I need to repeat it again. This isn't at all sponsored, right? <laughs> this is uh, it was a cigar that we rated, we rated high, and I thought let's put it in in the podcast. It's not a sponsored segment or anything like that. These are truly our opinions on it. Yeah, and and, and I'm a big fan of my father. I mean, I, I'm always a big La Promesa guy. So I, when, yeah. whenever somebody tells me, hey, I, I've never really smoked a cigar before. What what should I... I always go, my father, La Promesa. I think Really? On a newbie? Yeah. I, Holy cause, moly. Because I think it's still, it's still, it's got enough, but it's it's not it's you mm. still you still get something and and i'll be honest with you, most of the time they're like hey that was pretty good so my father's usually my my go-to guys and i love by the way you know me i'm a, I'm a big uh, label i didn't know guy. that i didn't know that about you i mean i mean listen first of all you got the little you got the little foot silk there you know what i mean and and, and then and then double double bands the the mx and the green and then the the, the regal hey, let's, let's be honest jimmy they had you at mx because everything mexican you love I, I lo- i'm the cuban mass mexican yeah, exactly so you, go raiders go raiders i knew they had you at mx that's it that's it liga mx cigars mx anything mx hey easy on liga mx so you're i know you rock got, an arsenal you got, you got your arsenal stuff on there right. so all right good we, we need hey man liga mx just whooped up on the mls so it's always it's always good stuff there Let's check back in on this bad boy, this uh, Fonseca MX. Uh, how are we feeling all with it, Eric? I think for me, the uh, all the flavors that we've been talking about are still there, right? That sweetness is uh, like ripe fruit sweetness, the roasted nuts, the pepper, and the earth. But now I get a lot more dark chocolate as mm. as maybe the the pepper has calmed down just a bit. I've got like. Dark chocolate is is all up in the picture right now. Oh. So I don't know if you guys are getting that too. All up in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right? It's like suddenly as as things settled mm-hmm. and the guy, uh, I like your your term, the cruising altitude. Right. As, right. as the cigar got into cruising altitude, 
everything kind of like, okay, here we are. This is what we're doing for the next hour. Now the dark chocolate just entered the picture. It was like the door opened and hey, I'm here. Yeah, so, yeah. And and I, awesome. I'm about I half it. I'm about halfway through, you know, and, and that's and that's you know, it's definitely the the finish isn't as potent, isn't as isn't as uh, as it was before. Yeah. Still good, don't get me wrong. But yeah, but now you definitely have a change. You have you have it's a little bit more subtle, it's a little bit now you've got to sort of when when you smoke it, you gotta well so, what is happening here? And that thing that is happening is that dark chocolate and i'll tell you what eric i, I gotta slow down because we, we we got some booze coming but but how, how are you doing with it so i i am picking up more complexity from it uh midway through so i'm getting the dark chocolate i'm also getting a little bit of licorice now i say that Ooh. a lot that note yeah it's, a note that you, it's you almost like get. a floral liquor it's almost like an anise uh anise, yeah and or anus, uh, or? Uh, <laughs> I didn't get that. Hey. I didn't get that one. Hey, I appreciate you hey. clarifying. <laughs> hey, but yeah, it's it's a very complex book. It's still very creamy. And it's it's doing well so far. Yeah, yeah. One more check back on the okay, cigar, let's right? Check, let's check it back. It has it has again kind of transitioned Ooh. after the rums. Ch -ch -h -ch -ch changes. That's right. That's right. So where are we at here, so, my friend? So, so we, we got we, we were in our dark chocolate era. Where are we now? Yeah, I, I think that uh, the peppers have come back up, right? As it's as it's as the heat is getting closer to you, the peppers have cranked back up. The earthiness has cranked back up, and now we're, it's kind of different than it was a second ago. So it it is it is a, it takes you for a ride. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be honest. When I go into a cigar lounge, I have a few brands that I usually right. pull for. Then I'm like, uh, I'll usually go for like an Oliva Milano, a Villager 1888. But this one might just join the rotation because at $12, this is an True. exceptional, exceptional really smoke. Is. I yeah. mean, the, the whole lineup of my father usually, that's my usually, that, that's my, that's my, that's almost like my everyday cigar. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just but do you, that, do you find that? Because it never fails. You know what I mean? Do you find that the Fonseca's, not, maybe not this one in particular, but do you find that the Fonseca's, fit in that same my father smoking profile because they all have kind of like a, a they all like taste a certain way you know yeah. they all have like several so brands. The, the 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 original fonseca that that my father released right i agree with you it 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 is a departure, a departure. from my father right right so it's a very different my father offering so and now, I, I think they did that really well because absolutely. it was it's a fonseca so absolutely. it's it's not like a, a La Promesa or a Flor de las Antillas or or any of those, and so so that I thought I thought they did a great job by making that one a departure. Yeah, uh, and now this adds another level of yeah, yeah. Like, like I think this is excellent, and, and I don't mean this at all in a negative way because because my I'll be honest, this is this is truth. This is truth. My father is my everyday cigar. I will go and I will smoke on my father on a Tuesday at two in the afternoon. But if you want to, if you want to, Rocky, did you hear him? Did <laughs> you hear it, what he just said? <laughs> Come on, Rocky. You know, you know, listen, Rocky and I, we've gone some rounds, but uh, but uh, but uh, but Rocky and I is my is my guy now. I mean, are you are you Dolph between, Lundgren in this? Are you Apollo Creed? Are you Mr. T? Who who are you in the Rocky fight? <laughs> if he if he smokes. He smokes. Okay. All right. But if you want to, maybe this is a Friday night. Maybe this is a Saturday night special kind of thing. This particular offering from my father. All right. Thanks for watching Cigar Snob on YouTube. If you enjoyed that, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to check out more of our content, go to the channel and you'll see mail time videos, podcasts, interviews with cigar insiders, and photo shoots with smoking hot models. And if you want even more Cigar Snob in your life, print a magazine and ship it straight to your house. It's a crazy idea, I know, but we're trying this out. Cigarsnob.com to do that. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you later.